Well, hello everybody, it's Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. And here in 2023, I wanna talk about coin shows a little bit. Um, I do plan on going to a big coin show. And by the time you see this video, may or may not have already happened, it is the fun show here in Orlando, Florida. Um, I love this show, it's gigantic, but shows are coming back. Now that the pandemic's kind of teetering off, whether you believe it or not, I don't know. But for us here in Florida, we've never really seen too much of a difference, but shows were kind of like stifled a little bit for sure in these last couple of years because of the pandemic. Um, things are coming back now, it does seem like. And that's a truth when it comes to things like the Fun Show, which, you know, during the pandemic, um, the United States Mint was not appearing at the Fun Show. Um, a lot of people were not going. Um, it wasn't very, you know, populated or was not as populated, although they had a pretty good couple of years because uh, people were dying to go into those big coin shows. Um, it could have been better. Um, not to say it was bad, it just could have been better. But the fact that the United States Mint's coming back and a lot of things are actually coming back to these shows, NGC is allowing that uh, that little thing at their tables now where you can uh, sign up to be a kind of a sample test grader and you get these little fun slabs from the fun show. Things like that show that um, you know there's a lot more faith in what's going on out there and a lot more uh, confidence in being able to be around people. Anyways, uh, coin shows are coming back. I hope that you have one in your area. If you don't, do a little traveling and go to one. It's a lot of fun. And not to just say that for the fun show, other shows are interesting. It's cool to see what people have. But I do want to have um, some information for you here and some warnings about those big shows. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. Let's just come out and say it. Scamming, thievery, etc. Um, all very popular among us. And I say us like collectors, stackers. Um, people love to take our money, right? They love to just... They know that we have money to spend because some of this stuff is very expensive. You know, here's a coin worth a couple thousand dollars. Um, it's common. Common for people to try to take advantage of us. Scammers, uh, thieves, etc. And sometimes you see it and you know what's going on, like, you know, TV shows and stuff that show coins. And you'll see some prices that are way too good to be true. Um, or you'll see some junky coins they really aren't worth that much, but they charge a crazy amount and they talk them up real big. Oh, this coin right here is from World War II era and it's so limited. You'll never be able to get one of these again. Uh, these are just an awesome collectible and for the throughout the ages, this will be um, a valuable coin, blah, 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 blah. You know, things like that or flat out. Um, somebody knows that this coin is very expensive and they found out that you have it and now you're at risk. Maybe, uh, you know, something crazy like they break into your home or, you know, you're at a show and they follow you home. There's actually stories about that. So be aware that when you're buying collectible coins or you're stacking precious metals, people know that they are valuable. Maybe not everybody in the whole world is into it, but thieves know what is and what is not valuable. So simple steps, right? You're going home and you're the one driving. Um, you know, keep an eye on your rearview mirror. See who's kind of been behind you for a while. Take some weird way home. Stop. Stop and get gas or get, you know, lunch or whatever or dinner. Um, and then just see if that same person might be behind you, right? I know it sounds like I'm being paranoid, but this stuff has actually happened. This is already, this is not something I'm making up to scare you like it comes out of a movie. These kind of stories have actually happened where people have followed people home, had them at gunpoint and said, I'm going to need those things that you paid that good money for, and I'm going to need them for free uh, because I'm a thief. And that's crazy to me that this happens, but it does. So take a weird way home um, and just keep an eye on who might be behind you, you know, car two length behind you, the car right behind you, whatever the case may be. Uh, make sure that there's nobody just tailing you, you know. I do that all the time, not not to be weird, not to sound paranoid, but uh, I take a weird way home or maybe I just don't go home immediately. Maybe I go a few other places, you know, uh, make those make those thieves get bored, you know, and I'm always protecting myself. Let's just say that Florida gives um, the residents as long as they are uh, within the let's just say the uh, the law to do so. Uh, protect themselves. 
And so in my state, I'm allowed to do that. And I'm always, let's just say I'm protecting myself. Let's just end it at that. Uh, for those of you that might be familiar with, uh, I don't know, things like the Second Amendment, um, which gives us the right to bear and keep arms, uh, you might understand what I'm talking about there. Anyways, that's enough about that stuff. Just be aware of what's going on. Um, also, I've noticed this a lot, and I've mentioned it before, that when you are at a coin show and there's you know tables, there's very limited space. Everybody that goes and uh, buys a table or tables have those limited areas, right? Sometimes there's some chairs in front of the areas, but you'll have maybe a stack of coins right here. And this always happens. You'll have somebody that's just surrounding this whole area, right? He might only be interested in this one Booker T. Washington coin for whatever reason, but he has now surrounded this entire table with his body and just hovering over and you start trying to, you know, peek around the corner, trying to see what this um, seller has. And that guy kind of like looks over his shoulder and tries to put his shoulder in front of your eye view because he's here right now. He wants to make sure that he's the only one important. Listen, um, do your business. You know, if you know that's the coin you want, by all means, sit down, check it out, take the time to check it out. But story time. I mean, like, you know, the, the old, you know, fishing tales, the one that got away. Um, I used to have this, you know, whew, I used to have a MS 69, uh, St. Godin's double Eagle. It was the only one of its kind. And I used to have one and, oh man, when I got married, you know, my wife said that was so great. And then we got divorced and she took it with her in the settlement. Ah, man, the one that got away. Um, those people spend a lot of money on those tables. They need you, no offense, kind of in and out. This is not a coin shop where you can kind of build a rapport with the uh, the owner there a little bit. Um, most of the time, they kind of expect you to find the coins that you want. They brought them from far away, and they need you to move on. And the person that's right there next to you would like to buy something, right? They're there for a purpose. They've spent a lot of money just for gas, probably either traveling from other states or shoot from me. It's a two mile or a two hour uh, drive approximately from my house to Orlando. And I got to get food and, you know, I'm spending time away from my children and my, my wife. And it's, it's valuable to me too, to get in and out of there as fast as I can, as safely as I can. So Think about that a little bit, right? Get the coin you're looking for. By all means, check it out. Do your due diligence. Make sure it's the right coin. Make sure it's toned evenly, whatever. It has a good, uh, nice, you know, um, presentation all around. There's a good, you know, stamping on it, whatever the case may be. Get that coin, but let's try to move, move along a little bit, you know, move along. Let other people enjoy coins. Um, and I just keep on seeing that so much where people crowd the table and there's not a lot of space. And, you know, there's a big person there looking over the table and then somebody else can't get the coins that they want. I've literally seen that happen. Been after maybe, I don't know, let's just say this right here, 19, or 1882 Carson City Morgan Dollar. And I've looked at it. I was sitting there waiting patiently. A uh, guy starts telling a story about how he had some kind of uh, Jefferson nickel that was worth a billion dollars. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm, I'm moving on. I, I can't I can't wait here for story time the entire time. You know, I got to go and I move on and I never come back and get that coin because I end up getting something else. So move along a little bit, please. And thank you. Um, it would greatly, uh, I think, help those coin shows if people kind of respected that everybody's there to buy coins, not just you. <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about, that one person. Um, listen, I, I, I just can't stress the safety thing, uh, you know, enough. And you know, I see people and they're bringing uh, like suitcases. They're just lugging suitcases behind them at these shows. And, you know, get that thing close to your body. If you're sitting down and looking at a coin, get that thing right there, maybe like between your legs and like, you know, just close your legs onto that uh, suitcase so that you know it's right there at all times. Don't walk away with that stuff. People put hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes in those suitcases because they're doing business, they're trading, or maybe they're buying stuff or they're trying to sell some stuff, you know, Keep an eye on your stuff, for sure. Um, realize where your wallet is. I often say that if you're going to carry cash there, and most people will carry cash, you know, don't just put it all in one pocket. Have that cash spread out throughout your body a little bit. Realize, you know, know where it is. You know, you've got this X amount of money in your left pocket, in your right pocket. Uh, maybe, you know, if you're a woman down in your bra. Hey, if you're a guy down in your bra, too. You know, sometimes you get older, you get a little bit bigger. It is what it is. I'm guilty of that, too. Um, or you just want to party and you like wearing bras, whatever the case may be, 
realize where that money is and, um, you know, spread it out, spread it out amongst your body a little bit. You know, like I said, don't make it easy for these thieves. You know, people will try to steal your money. Don't make it easy for them. Don't be an easy target. You know, be aware of your surroundings a little bit. Look around for the exits in case something crazy goes down. Know where your exits are. Um, it's, it's important stuff, man. You might think I'm being paranoid or crazy, but that might be important one day to somebody. Uh, there's plenty of news stories you can see right now on the internet. Type in coin show, uh, thieves, coin show, um, th stealing, etc. And there's news stories about stuff that's happened as early as last year, the year before. I mean, there will be stories this year, I'm sure. It's just going to keep happening. But um, I would also recommend when you go to these shows, um, things that I do, and uh, let's see if I have... Well, I'm not going to show you. Let's actually put a blank piece of paper right here. I usually keep something like this, uh, some notes about things that I'm definitely looking for. And typically when I go to those shows, my notes tend to expand because I didn't know that whatever kind of coin or silver bar or gold bar existed. And then so my notes start expanding. But at the very least, I keep like a, a note list of things that I'm really, really looking for. So I don't forget, um, you know, there's a lot of things out there that I'm looking for, but I want to try to narrow it down sometimes for when I go to these shows. And between you and I, there's some very, very serious things that I'm looking for at these next coin shows that are coming up. And so I'm going to put them on my list. I'm going to try to fill that list. If, uh, if I can't fill that list and I expand and I get something else, it is what it is, but at least I have an idea of things that I was, you know, immediately going for. So I will say that. Um, if you're a dealer, this thing frustrates the crud out of me. Uh, we got this price guide thing, right? It's called like the gray sheet, right? That the dealers use. And then the uh, uh, the buyers have like a market review. We try to meet in the middle a little bit, right? Now I saw this article on coin buying and uh, the woman who wrote the article said that if the coin is, let's say it's labeled um, in the uh, gray sheet for 2000, then do not haggle, make sure you pay that price um, I totally, totally disagree with that. First of all, haggling goes all over the place, right? Um, just because the gray sheet or the market review says that is the price does not mean that that's the current going rate of a coin at any given time, right? That's their opinion on what things are going for. Um, depending on what the coin is, it could be hot right at that moment. Uh, a lot of these magazines and uh, price guides are not, you know, built every single day or every single week you know they're quarterly maybe uh, some of them are you know annually so you have to end up kind of using your best judgment on things see how the market's going you know um, don't always trust a price guide for instance things like the red book um, although it's great information on coins the prices are terrible um, ngc the prices on NGC's websites are usually pretty off on what's actually going on out there um, and then this always happens too. You'll have example like this right here. Um, a seller will end up putting a little sticker of their own on one of the slabs. This one says PQ, which stands for premium quality. This is a, an opinion, really. You know, this is, and everything is an opinion, is it not? The slab itself being graded MS65 is realistically an opinion. The sticker that a seller puts on after the fact is an opinion. The price that a seller puts on his coins is up for debate. Um, it's up for um, negotiations. And realize negotiations can happen anywhere. If a seller is not willing to take your price, you can offer something else or you can walk away. And it is what it is. Um, sometimes things affect the price of a coin. For instance, uh, let's get a uh, right here. An AU55. Can you see that one? Let's see. Standing Liberty Quarter, right? It's a nice quarter, blah, blah, blah. Let's imagine this had some really cool rainbow toning. Well, now the price guide for AU55, it's just totally obsolete, right? Because now it's got this fancy rainbow toning. And sellers right now for toning, for toned coins that are really, really, you know, appealing to the eye, they're going for an astronomical price right now, toned coins. So, you know, it is what it is. That's part of the game. You have to understand that uh, just because it says something in a price guide does not mean that that is any kind of uh, written in stone, you know, style uh, information. We can haggle, we can move around the numbers a little bit, and if one party doesn't like them, we can all move on, right? Uh, at the end of the day, there will be another coin somewhere, and I think that if we miss that one particular coin, we'll go on.
I know, if you're like me, you dream about it, you can't stop thinking about it, you probably go back the next day and try to get it, but life will go on. There's another coin somewhere or another piece of paper money, whatever the case may be, and life will go on, believe it or not. Ripley's, believe it or not. Anyways, uh, that's what I say about that. Um, kind of, you know, be aware of what is, you know, the price though. If you have your, your little cheat sheet, like I said, you should bring, uh, maybe it wouldn't hurt just to put the price uh, that you think that the coin is worth right here next to it. So let's say um, I write down, I'm just going to write this down just for funsies. I'm really, really looking for a 1927 MS65 plus um, double eagle. I'm, I was, man, I just had my mind on that right there. Uh, that particular year has something special going on for me. And uh, that particular grade right there, I just uh, it really speaks to me. Um, and I don't want to pay any more than, I don't know, I've been looking around uh, $27.50 for that coin right there. And I don't, I, psh, listen, you're going to kill me right now if it's way off price um, in the price guides. But let's just imagine for a second that that coin is $27.50. Well, Based upon my research, that's where I want to stay. So if I go to a seller's table and he has this exact coin right there, but it's 3500 that's too far for me personally. Might not be too far for you, but that's, that's too much for me. So I'm going to walk away. I'm going to look for the guy that has one closer there. If I find something that's, you know, 2800 2850 I'll try haggling. That doesn't work. Maybe I'll go ahead and take the deal, whatever the case may be. But have some prices down there because that'll help you out at the end of the day. The idea is when you go to a coin show, because especially a large show, like the one I'm going to, the fun show, it's massive. Hundreds of tables there, hundreds of sellers. It's absolutely ridiculous. You want to be focused and prepared for that show. It's a four-day show. I can only go for one day, just Thursday. And uh, if you're going to be there and you see me, that's great, man. I'd like to see you and shake your hand too, for sure. But I only get one chance, one day to go there. So I want to make sure that I get to see everything I you know, want to see and I, I get to every coin that I'm trying to get after. And uh, that's my goal, man. I'm just And definitely my goal is to leave out of there, um, you know, safer uh, than, you know, what most people expect you to leave at a coin show because they expect you to be vulnerable, man. You leave them with, sometimes with gold and silver and collectible coins in your in your pants and pockets, man. I want to be very safe leaving there. I want to get home safe, see my kids, um, throw the coins to the side and hug my children uh, because that's what's important to me the most uh, for sure. And, you know, I've mentioned things like when you go to like a, a large coin show, uh, this one right here has some food there. It's very expensive food, but there's no like, hey, you can't bring food into the show kind of rules. So man, stuff like a protein bar in your pocket or a little granola bar, whatever the case may be, as you're walking around, uh, hit that a little bit. Because um, I tell you what, for me, just walking around and just staring at coins, it's a lot of work sometimes. No joke. I know that sounds weird, right? Uh, a lot of tables, they put like candies on their table because they know that your sugar is going to start dropping a little bit. You're going to be kind of all amped up on all these coins. You know, how, phew, man, you know how we are, man. You're going to have your adrenaline pumping because of that, um, I don't know, proof like Morgan Dollar that you saw. And that adrenaline spike is just going to dump and you're just going to be like, whoa, I need some candy or something. Uh, but there is food there. It's very expensive, but... You can always line your pants with uh, whatever you took back from the buffet because the rule does not say that it's all you can eat while you're here at the buffet. Huh? See, you learn something from Spectacular. So line your pockets with garbage bags and shove ham and turkey and uh, mashed potatoes in your pants and leave the buffet as a winner. Right? Yes, for sure. Um, but yeah, think about that. I've mentioned before in another video that uh, if you know that you have medications during whatever times, bring like your little like Monday through Friday little pill popper medication thing with you. Um, have those ready to go because it could be a long day for you. Uh, for me, it's going to be a, a pretty much all day event. And then where I'm going, the fun show, traffic to and from Orlando is absolutely dumb. It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. A lot of times if GPS tells me it's going to be an hour and a half drive, I have to add an hour and a half to whatever that is just one way. Because if one person gets to an, into an accident on the road, I am absolutely stuck in that that uh, I-4 uh, road right there. It's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And so what happens? People know that I-4 is terrible. And so they take a alternative route. And what happens? That alternative route gets jam-packed too. It's, it's inevitable. I mean, it's going to be a long day. 
And that's what I'm prepared for. Hopefully some of these little tips will help you. But um, yeah, man, enjoy yourselves at coin shows. In 2023, I expect coin shows will start booming. And as more people get into these collectibles and numismatics um, and precious metals, I think that you're going to find that more coin shows and coin clubs start popping up all over the country. And we want that. We want people to have um, a really good experience with coins and, and precious metals. And, uh, you know, I love it. And I think a lot of you that are still watching almost 20 minutes into this stinking video, which is just me rambling, you love it too. And we want to spread the love, right? We want children to get involved so those children end up being coin collectors uh, growing up. And I tell you what, some of these kids that you'll see at these shows, and it's a younger, younger crowd all the time, probably because I'm getting older and older. But it seems like they're getting younger and younger. They're wise, man. They're way smarter than I'll ever be at coins. You know, I got a secondary job where I got to focus on that. I got a family now. You know, I'm a middle-aged man, and I don't have time to learn about coins like I used to. And so during my spare time, you know, I, I end up learning what I can. Um, and for my mentors, like uh, the coin guy and other coin shops that I visit and people online, I mean, those people right there I rely on information from. But I can't just get as much information as I used to be able to, and it seems like it doesn't stick like it used to, you know. It's just me getting older. What can I say? I mean, most of the you that are watching me right now due to my knowing of my analytics on YouTube, uh, I know that you're older than I am, most of you. And so you know exactly what I'm talking about. The brain doesn't function the same way as it used to. Uh, we can blame COVID-19 all you want, but I don't think it's that at all. I think it's just the fact that we're getting a little older now. And that's the way the mind works, isn't it? We used to be sharp as a tack. And now we're, I don't know, just dull, dull and boring. <laughs> anyways i'm way too far off topic you all have fun at coin shows take a visit take a chance if there's one local to you even if it's not that local you want to drive there have that experience i want to see everybody down in the comments saying like hey you know i took a chance i went to a coin show 2023 it was actually pretty neat um, if it's a small show support them uh, show them that that coin shows are important and uh just have a good time be safe and I got to go for now. I'll see you later. Hopefully, you'll see more of me as long as the uh, as long as my safety approach worked out um, at the coin show that I'm going to. And I think it will. I think I have a good strategy. Spectacular. Appreciate you for watching. And is out. The silver stacular strikes again, the silver dot.